Okay, so thank you very much and thanks the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So I have been told that the title of my talk is very vague and somehow I still manage to make it not very adequate to what I will be talking about since I've changed a plan of my talk yesterday. In particular, I think uh, I will only talk uh, about my work with Clemens. So let's start with, uh, with an example. So we have our standard 2MO sequence with some colors, which I hope you can see. And uh, we can look at a sequence which encodes the differences of the consecutive occurrences of a, a letter zero in the sequence. So the sequence is given by three since the first zero appears at zero and the second zero appears <laughs> at three. So the difference is three then it is two, then it is one. And since the uh, two and more sequence is uniformly recurrent, so every word and in particular every letter appears with bounded gaps, the sequence we get is uh, of course bounded and it turns out to be again to automatic. And the same uh, happens uh, with, uh, if we look at one except of zero and this led uh, Jeffrey Shiley to ask a question, okay, so what happens if, we, if you consider words of length uh, greater and, and equal to? And in fact, he conjectured that uh, then the sequence is not automatic. Um, and this was proven by Spiegelhofer in 2021. And the way it was done, is that, okay, first you can realize that you can reduce this problem to a particular word of length two. Then you realize, and this is something that was actually known before, that the sequence uh, is in fact uh, substitutive of or morphic. And then you show that, uh, you have to show that this morphic sequence is not automatic, which is what Lucas did, and in fact, I mean, he showed uh, uh, a much, he showed much more. He showed that uh, in a quantitative sense, this sequence is actually very far from being automatic since it's k kern, I mean, it's uh, two kernel is very far from being finite. And uh, this uh, question of whether some particular morphic or substitutive sequence is automatic somehow appeared in various different contexts. And uh, in particular, one striking example of this is the study of Grigor Chub group when there is a morphism, a particular morphism of non-constant length, which is used to give a presentation of Grigor Chub group by, by relations. And uh, at some point, Grigor Chub lands the person whose name as, uh, whose surname unfortunately I do not know how to pronounce showed that uh, this this, uh, this uh, morphism gives a sequence with, which is actually uh, automatic and it was somehow important for the study of Schreier group of, of this Grigorchu group and in fact uh, the fact that the sequence is automatic was realized much earlier but by allusion decking but well the uh, uh, sorry, but Alush and Catholic, but I mean, they didn't uh, thought of publishing this because they didn't think it was very important. So this was, I think, I believe the final push for them to write a very nice paper titled Hidden Automatic Sequences. When they gave a lot of motivation for studying this problem, you can look, at, look it up for more examples. And well, the problem is as follows. So you have a substitutive sequence given by a substitution phi and a coding and you want to decide whether it is automatic. So ideally, what we would like to have is we have a substitution and a coding, and we want an if and only if nice checkable conditions on a substitution and coding that are equivalent to the sequence with being automatic. And of course, if we start uh, with a sequence which is ultimately, which is periodic, then you cannot say much about the substitution since we can take any substitution and uh, code it to a constant sequence. So we will always assume, in fact, that our uh, X is not ultimately periodic. Uh, okay, so now I want to do uh, uh, a little detour 
and talk a little about a Cobham's theorem, which will be relevant in the study. So in general, there is this uh, philosophy, which uh, I wrote it here as a slogan, that objects with, which come from arithmetically independent origins are expected, are expected to have a little overlap. And you can see examples of this in various areas of mathematics. For example, famous Fistenberg's two times two free conjectures, which quantify in various ways a prediction that an irrational real number uh, should have its expansions in multiple, that its expansions in multiplicatively independent basis should have little in common. For example, their entropy, the sum of their entropy should be greater than or equal than one. The finiteness of solutions of S, S units equations and more generally the finiteness of intersections of sets of values of independent linear recurrent sequences, which I will maybe touch upon a little bit if I come to the proofs. The intersection of fractals, so iterated function system, which are given by multiplicatively independent ratios, and something which is very relevant for us in combinatorics and words, and especially automata theory, the fact that digital sequences, which uh, are defined uh, in, uh, with respect to expansions in multiplicatively independent bases, should should be should be very different and a prototypical and very old result uh, um, uh, uh, about in this direction, which I do believe has already been mentioned some time ago during this conference, is an old theorem of Cobham, which says, well, the easy uh, thing to see is that a, a sequence that the set of sequences in multiplicatively dependent bases are the same, uh, coincide, and the sequence is automatic with respect to two multiplicatively independent bases, even only if it is trivial, so even only if it is ultimately periodic. And Cobham's theorem has been generalized to a variety, variety of different settings and to larger classes of digital sequences. I will not even try to give any overview. So uh, digital sequences which take uh, infinitely many values like uh, regular sequences or k miler functions or uh, for example, morphic sequences and I will talk about it since it will be relevant. And for this, I would need to give you a concrete setup I will use so this is just an information for you that I will be thinking of automatic sequences as codings of fixed points of constant length substitution. And as we have seen today already, this is the same as the usual definition using automata, if this is what you prefer. And if we relax this assumption that the substitution should have constant length, then we get a larger class of substitutive homomorphic sequences. And I will be somehow quite careful in stating the setup here since uh, it will be quite important. So I will say that the sequence X is substitutive if, <coughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, if there exists a non erasing substitution on some alphabet together with some prolongable letter a fixed point of this substitution given by iterating this prolong prolongable letter such that all letters from my alphabet appear in this fixed point. So this is not in any, any way restrictive, I can always assume this. And a coding which sends this fixed point to, the, uh, to my sequence. And if I have such a setup, I will say that X is a substitutive sequence and it is produced by this triple phi A and tau. And to state uh, a generalization of Cobham's theorem to substitutive sequences, I have to tell you what the base of a substitutive sequence is. And for that, I need to uh, tell you what an incidence matrix is. So with any substitution, we can, um, we can associate it some matrix. And uh, looking at an example here, mm -hmm. We have a substitution that maps 0 to 0, 1 and 1 to 0, 0. So in the first column, which corresponds to 0, we put 
how many, uh, how many times each letter uh, appears. So zero appears one, so it is one. One appears one, so it is one. And in one, zero appears two times, so we have two here. And one doesn't appear, so it is zero. So in general, we look at the substitution and we only and uh, we forget about how the letters are put in our images. We only look at how many of them we are. And if we have uh, and if we have our incidence matrix, then it allows us easily to compute the growth rates of any uh, word. The growth rate is always a linear recurrence sequence uh, with characteristic <coughs> polynomial given by the polynom uh, minimal polynomial of this incidence matrix. And since the matrix is non-negative, non-negative by parent Frobenius theorem, it has a dominant eigenvalue. So positive uh, eigenvalue that dominates uh, any other eigenvalue. And we can think of this eigenvalue alpha as a base of our substitutive sequence. So we say that the sequence is alpha substitutive for some real parent number alpha if it can be produced by this triple with substitution phi having dominant eigenvalue A. And uh, for substitutive sequences in 2011, Duron obtained a complete um, generalization of Cobham's theorem to the setting. So we have that a sequence, substitutive sequence is uh, alpha substitutive and beta substitutive beta substituted where, uh, with, alpha, uh, with alpha beta multiplicatively independent even only if it is ultimately periodic. And if and somehow if you believe this philosophy of uh, multiplicatively uh, multiplicative in the independence and uh, little overlap, we could suspect that if we have a morphic sequence which is automatic, then the substitution phi actually should be very close to being of constant length. And I, I think we could try maybe to um, somehow uh, state it even in the, uh, in, in the language of abstract numeration systems. So, uh, there is a correspondence between substitutive homomorphic sequences and abstract numeration systems. And this is basically what we show, at least in the cases we can treat. Uh, okay, so I should say that this problem of when a morphic sequence is automatic has already been, has actually been along much longer. It has already been explicitly stated in the classical book of Alush and Shalit uh, on automatic sequences and was investigated much earlier by Deking. And in particular, Deking showed the following useful and quite easy to prove criterion sufficient cri criterion, which says that if we have a length, uh, uh, if the length vector, so a vector which consists of the lengths of uh, images of phi over all letters is a left eigenvector of our incidence matrix, then X has to be automatic. So, and this condition is easily seen to be not necessary. And we can easily come up with some uh, necessary conditions. So by a straightforward uh, application of Durant's theorem, we see that the dominant eigenvalue of the, um, uh, of the incidence matrix of our substitution has to be multiplicatively dependent with some integer for our sequence to be automatic. And of course, it is also well known to not be sufficient. So the substitutive sequences with a dominant eigenvalue and integer, which are not actually automatic. The other uh, necessary condition comes from the dynamical eigenvalues of the systems corresponding to the, uh, to the um, substitutive sequences. So with any sequence, we can associate it a subshift, which is just the <coughs> orbit closure of the sequence together with a, a shift map. And a complex number, lambda, is a dynamical eigenvalue. If there exists some non-zero continuous function from x uh, to the complex <coughs> number, such that f composed with t is uh, equal to lambda f. So this is, so you can, so, 
you, you can lift the map T to a map on the continuous, func uh, continuous function. This is called a Kupman operator, and these are basically the uh, eigenvalues of the Kupman operator. And for minimal, so minimal, so uh, given by uh, uniformly recurrent sequences, so for minimal K automatic systems, we have a full description <laughs> of its eigenvalues, and its eigenvalues are rational, and they are given exactly by kn fruits of unity, and then possibly some finite number of roots of unity, uh, of h roots of unity when, when h is some integer prime with k. So for purely automatic uh, systems, it was proven much earlier by Deking, actually in the same paper, in which he gave this necessary uh, sufficient condition for automaticity. And uh, much later, uh, Rui Miyasawi and Clemens Wilner uh, showed the general case. And uh, unfortunately, this uh, still is not uh, sufficient. So you can come up with a substitu uh, substitutive systems which has exactly the eigenvalues you would expect, but it's not automatic. However, as far as I know, all examples of uniformly uh, uh, recurrent uh, morphic sequence, which are not automatic, which somehow appeared naturally in the literature, could be treated by this criterion. So in particular, all the examples I showed you, the, the, uh, the, the things which Lucas showed and the no, all, all other examples in the paper, hidden automatic sequences could be treated by this criterion. So this is, seems to be quite powerful. And in, in general, it, uh, I mean, it works in a more, it can be used in more general settings. So uh, if you have any sequence uh, uh -huh. which you suspect is not automatic and maybe you, you do not have much luck uh, showing it using uh, combinatorial tools. It might be useful to check if something is known about the dynamical eigenvalues of the sequence. And this is especially relevant if your sequence comes up with a natural s adic structure or, uh, uh, or you can find some s adic structure for it. So some so your sequence is given by some iteration of morphism, which, uh, which may not be the same morphism, and you do not have much of them. And this is because there is a lot of work, and there are a lot of necessary and sufficient conditions for various numbers to be, to be uh, eigenvalues of such a static system. So I think uh, this is a good place to look if you want to show that some sequence is not automatic. Uh, okay, and uh, the last thing I want to uh, say before I state the main results mm -hmm. is that uh, also the incidence matrix is not enough. So here we have two substitutions. Here we have the first one, here we have <coughs> the second. And as you can see, so they are different, but as you can see, they have the same incidence matrix. And the first one is automatic, and the second one is not. So there is no linear uh, condition for automaticity of even primitive um, morphic sequences. So the combinatorics of substitution play, play a role. So the way particular letters are placed uh, play a role. And one can often capture this combinatorics by something which is called return words and return substitution. So I will not define it, but I will give you an example and hopefully it will be clear. So here we have some primitive substitution with its fixed point. And uh, we look at the first letter, which is A, and the return words to this first letter, uh, the, and irreducible return words to this first letter are just words which start with A and do not contain any other uh, appearance of A, and then this word plus A is once again in a, uh, in a language of a shift. So 
the set of return words to, to this first letter A is of course finite if the substitution is primitive. And in this case, it can be checked that it is actually given just by these two words. And if we apply our substitution phi to any of these irreducible words, what we get is a unique concatenation of other irreducible words. And this falls from the fact that phi of A starts with A. As if I have here, I have this AC and I apply phi to it. And then here I have A and I apply phi to it. So it will start with A. So here I have some long return words and I can uniquely factorize it into irreducible return words. So this allows me to define a new substitution, which is a substitution uh, defined on, a, on an alphabet which consists of these return words. And this is what we call return substitution or on derived substitution. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, as I've said, what we show is that uh, X is automatic even only if the substitution is already close to being of constant length. And in particular, uh, for uniformly recurrent sequences, so when the substitution phi is primitive, we showed that the Deking's criterion Y, while applied to the return substitution, essentially gives an even or naive condition for automaticity of uh, our sequence. Um, so here we have this uh, um, substitutive sequence with given by phi, which is primitive, and we let rho denote this return substitution and m rho its incidence matrix. And uh, we have the following result, which says that the sequence is automatic, even only if the length vector of uh, um, the length vector consisting of lengths of some power of phi of words uh, W is a left eigen vector of, uh, of this incidence matrix. When here this S is not very important, uh, this S is the size of the largest Jordan block of uh, incidence matrix corresponding to eigen value <coughs> zero. So in particular, if we have a substitution which is proper, which means that the, that the image of uh, uh, each letter uh, by phi starts with the same letter. So here the substitution is proper since each image starts with A. Then, uh, yes, and uh, so uh, many, many substitutive sequence you naturally get are proper. For example, if you have something called bratterly Verschick diagram and you read a, a substitutive sequence from it, then it naturally will be proper. And in fact, any uniformly recurrent uh, substitutive sequence can be given by a proper substitution. So once we have, uh, uh, sorry, once we have, uh, um, once we have a proper substitution, then we see that the Deking's criterion apply, um, uh, applied just to incidence matrix. So I don't have to go for return words. Uh, gives even only if condition when we. Uh, take phi to an appropriate power. So in particular, if we happen to have a substitution which is proper and the matrix does not have eigenvalue zero, then the sequence is automatic if and only if a constant, so S is zero there <coughs> then, so the constant sequence of ones is uh, a left eigenvector and this is the same as saying that a substitution is already of constant length. And uh, yeah, I think it can be considered very easy to check. Um, so this is for uniformly recurrent sequences. So in the general case, uh, things get a little bit more complicated, especially if we have periodic points. Um, so now we'll put some assumptions on a substitution. Okay, so we'll assume that our substitution phi is non-degenerate. It is not very important what it means. It's basically so that the linear recurrent sequences which give the growth rates of words are non-degenerate. And the important thing is, is that each substitution has some power which is non-degenerate, so we can assume it without loss of generality. 
And now what we'll assume is that our sequence is either purely substitutive, so there is no coding, or there can be a coding, but the sequence is aperiodic, which means that in the shift generated by the sequence, we do not see periodic points. And under this assumption, what we show is that the sequence is automatic, even only if, for all words in the language of our sequence, these words have a very simple growth, namely they are translates of a geometric progressions with the same ratio k, and the set of these translates is finite. So this is what I mean by saying it is close to being of constant length. And so this is yet uh, not a finitary condition since I'm saying for this holds for all words in a language. However, this may, can be made effective, but for this I have to introduce some set of words. And once again, uh, this is a definition, but I will give you example. So we have a substitution phi here, which sends A to B, A, B, and B to A, B. And uh, we look for each letter, we look at a set of words such that this word plus A is a prefix. So here we have B and B A is a prefix of A, so uh, is a prefix of phi of A, so we put B here. Here uh, we have uh, A B, so A uh, yeah, so a, b is a prefix and we put a. Then we take a second power of our substitution, which for, okay, so this is not necessary. And uh, we do the same. So we look at, uh, um, we look at here we have a. So we put word a, b, b because a, b, b, a is a prefix. Then we look at the next occurrence of a and we put a word a, b, b, a, b since a, b, b, a, b, a is a prefix, and we do the same for, word, uh, for letter b. So we have b, a, because b, a, b is a prefix, and b, a, b, a, b, uh, sorry, b, a, b, a, because b, a, b, a, b is a prefix. And we do this up to m, which is equal to the size of the alphabet. So in this case, my alphabet has size two. It consists of A and B, so I'm actually done. But in general, you want to do this up to, up to the size of the alphabet. And you have this set of all these red words. And now, now once we have the set of these red words, the condition we can cook, cook up looks like this. So we say that a sequence is automatic even only if the following two conditions hold. First of all, for each letter in the alphabet, uh, its growth rate is given by a translate of a geometric progression. And for all this finite number of red words, I see that their growth rate is a geometric progression. And this condition is uh, even only if, under these assumptions that I uh, stated earlier. So now what happens when I have a completely general setup? So now I, I assume that I have a coding and I can have, um, and I can have periodic points in the orbit. So what we have seen, so now I have some coding and what we have seen is that if this X is aperiodic, then actually the automaticity of x depends only on the substitution phi and not on the coding. Yes, in this, I had some coding there, but we do not see a coding anywhere in this, uh, uh, in this theorem. And this is not long, no longer true in the general case when I have periodic points. And this is not very to see why. So here is some example which shows, uh, which shows you why it is not true. And uh, uh, I don't think I will go through it. However, um, I will say that, I mean, it is decidable whether a general morphic sequence is automatic. 
Uh, and if you really forced me, I could sit down and write uh, even only if conditions. You basically, apart from the conditions we had, if you have periodic points, you need to somehow control the growth rate of the gaps of these periodic points and you can put them somehow in a finite conditions, but right now we do not have any conditions which is nice and easy to state and this is not written. This part is not written down anywhere. Okay, so now I will uh, say a little bit about the proof. <coughs> yeah, I think I will just uh, state uh, something which I call reco uh, quantitative recognizability for automatic sequences, which is um, one of the main tools we use to, to solve uh, this problem. So if you've never heard of recognizability, then recognizability for automatic, morphic or asiatic sequences basically is a statement which says that if you have a, ver if you have a word in your language, then you can uniquely substitute it with respect to your substitution, provided the word is long enough. And uh, the usual statement for uh, recognizability work, so this really comes rather from the dynamical systems community, and they are usually, so very often, although it changes slowly, dynamics are only, uh, interested in substitutions and don't not look at codings, so they are interested in purely substitutive systems. And then there is a recognizability criterion. And what we wanted is a, a criterion which works for general automatic sequence, and not necessarily minimal. And what we also wanted is the, you know, what we also wanted is a good control of how well we can substitute this word. So now some notations for a sequence and a word in a language. We let, uh, uh, so this is U and here, okay, so W should be U. So we let any, uh, no, this is, yeah, it should be NXU, sorry. So we should, uh, so we let NXU denote the set of occurrences of, uh, uh, of the word U in a, a sequence X. For a word U, we let LU be a number L, integer L, such that the length of U is between K to the power L and K to the power L minus L plus one. And we also let L, L for X denote the union of languages of all periodic subsystems of the system generated by X. So all, all words which lie in the language of some periodic word. And the statement that we have says that if we have a k-automatic sequence, then we can find some integer t. Uh, okay, maybe t is not important. We can, you can find some integer m and a finite set of rational numbers which depend only on x such that for each word which is not periodic, the set of difference of uh, occurrences of these words in, uh, in my sequence lies in the set uh, taken modulo a power k which is very close to the actual length of u, just by definition of u, lies in a finite set. And um, yeah, and the way we use it is to first, so I said uh, to you that uh, mm, mm, return words are useful, so the way we use it is to first show uh, that the growth rate we want to see works for all return words. And um, yeah, so this is what we show. We show that using this, we can show that, um, we can show that all return uh, words to all letters, to all other words have uh, expect the growth we want. 
And to do so, we use this, uh, this criterion I uh, showed you, and we use some simple and known um, mm, results about the finiteness of the intersection of uh, linear, independent linear recurrence sequences. But I think uh, I will not go through the proof because there's no way uh, I will do it in time. So thank you very much for the attention. Thank you. So, are there questions? Uh, thank you for a very nice talk. I was kind of curious. Um, uh, often it's the case that morphic uh, sequences that are not automatic correspond to some other numeration system, like the Fibonacci word you can mm -hmm. represent it in second of representation. Um, so, I'm, so if I you think there is, I mean, in some ways, uh, there are probably experts here that will tell you more. There is some correspondence between uh, morphic sequences and what is called abstract numeration systems. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, uh, yeah. there's some work by Riga, I think. Yeah. So uh, I was uh, curious uh, if when you have those um, uh, examples that seem a little exotic to me where you have a sequence uh, that's morphic with eigenvalues that are uh, multiplicatively dependent with k, but uh, the sequence is not k-automatic. Is there a way to see uh, what kind of numeration system it corresponds to, if any? I actually thought about this yesterday at 2 a.m. when I was finishing <laughs> a talk, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I would have to really look at how the correspondence between this 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 things work. So I also thought about this question yesterday, <laughs> but I have no idea right now. Okay, but thank it's, you. Uh, it's an interesting question. Um, uh, when I saw the last uh, theorems that you mentioned, I, uh, I thought about the article of Fabian Durand and I remember that which one exactly the, uh, the one of the finite set uh, of uh, rationals yes this one? This, yes that yeah. one um, I remember that uh, one of the key arguments for the uh, theorem of Fabian was to study the frequencies of the letters or of the patterns and uh, the theorem of uh, Durand Cobham's theorem. Yeah, the, yes, yeah? yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, and I th it, it, it sounds similar to that, like the finite set uh, be, uh, that considered the frequencies. Did you consider this approach? Mm, like looking at frequencies? Yes, of the, like your uh, okay, sequence. So, so the answer is uh, very short. No, I did <laughs> not consider. So uh, I, somehow it was, uh, because basically this kind of comes, this is this kind of comes as a uh, as a follow up to this uh, result of Clemens and Rehm about eigenvalues, which I told you later. You may not see it here, but it's very related. So we were looking at this from a very dynamical point of view, and yeah. So I don't I don't really. Uh, and have you considered in studying the, the automatic sequences in the multidimensional context? Um, well, yeah, I know of them, but what? Uh, yeah, I. But what would you want? What statement that? Uh, mm. How to check if some multidimensional sequence is automatic? Yeah, something like that. For example, for um, uh, block substitutions or rectangular okay. substitutions. Uh, so the, it is a very interesting question. I have not considered it at all. At all, if I when I was uh, um, when I was thinking about uh, uh, multidimensional automatic sequences, I was thinking in other directions. So this is this is some there are some results which well, I knew I wouldn't get to. But we basically have this um, with Jakub Byszewski and Jakub Konieczny, mm -hmm. we have this finitary statement of Cobham's theorem, which is not important what the statement is, but it basically tells you what exactly 
is the set of common factors <laughs> of two multiplicatively uh, independent automatic sequences. And it says that it has very simple structure and right now it is even uh, computable. And I was thinking that this is something, so recognizability still plays a huge role here. And, uh, and this result is actually quite old, modular decomputability. And I was always thinking that this is something that is likely to be generalizable to the multidimensional context. Because you have Cobham's theorem for multidimensional automatic sequences. And I've seen that there are some good works about recognizability in this context. So I think if someone is interested in multidimensional <laughs> things and maybe is interested in this multiplicatively independent stuff, then this is uh, a nice thing to look at. Uh, I definitely do not plan to look at it in the near future, so if anyone is interested. But I did not think about uh, how to check if other multidimensional sequences are automatic at all. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, if there are no other questions, we can thank the speaker again.